Hi there everybody, it's Dr. Heather Hammerstedt from Holist and I'm just adjusting my light here. There we go. Um, I am here for Medical Monday today. I just wanted to hop in and tell you I have a really exciting guest today. Uh, her name is Dr. Katie Deming and she is from Make Mary. Um, I, you guys know that I love to come on and interview other um, physician entrepreneurs about interesting things or uh, other physicians who are, have really interesting ideas about healthcare and how we can change it. Um, today I'm excited to have Dr. Deming on because she is a great example of doctors that are thinking outside of the box, um, that are um, ready to bring their skills and their knowledge um, to us in a slightly different way. Um, so, uh, sh so this is one of the things that I really want to highlight for everybody is that your doctors are real people. And I know that's shocking to hear, <laughs> but, um, we have ideas and things that we want to do that are sometimes outside of mainstream medicine. And, um, hi Katie, I think she's trying to join. You can, um, click to join or let me know if you need me to, oh, I'm going to add you right here. There. So Dr. Deming is a radiation oncologist. She's in Portland, Oregon, and she modifies and has created bras to fit her. Hi there. Hi. Good morning. That was slick. Good morning. You were on quick. <laughs> I'm trying to make it work. I, yeah. I have not done this before, but yeah, it was easy. Yeah, good. Well, thanks for getting up early this morning and seeing us on this Monday morning and happy Medical Monday. Thank you. So Glad I was be. just talking about you a little bit in the context of the fact that I just really love to interview um, other doctors who are doing really interesting things both in and outside of kind of our box of medicine. And, um, and I wanted to have you on even a month ago, and I think we crossed paths because of some co uh, conflicts, and then we got to meet in person. So now it's even more exciting to see you. <laughs> yes. So tell, um, tell our viewers a little bit about, you know, who you are in terms of kind of conventional practice for medicine and what you're doing now that's so interesting. Sure. So I'm a radiation oncologist and I practice in Portland, Oregon, and I specialize in breast cancer. And my business outside of medicine is Make Mary. And uh, with that business, I actually did not intend... Uh, I did not set out to create a business, but I was really trying to solve a problem for my patients. Um, women who have radiation for breast cancer develop a sunburn-like reaction over their breast. Um, and it makes it really painful and difficult to wear traditional clothing. And so for years, I was problem solving with my patients and, you know, jerry-rigging their own bras to make them work during treatment, um, but ultimately decided that they deserve to have something better and that I was frustrated that nobody was thinking about this problem or thinking that it was a problem worth solving. And so I hired a little team here and started designing. I'm really thinking that I was going to give product to my patients, not really thinking I was going to start a business. But um, as I found out, apparel manufacturing as well as patents and all of that is complicated and expensive and really the best way that you're going to be able to create a product that's worthwhile is uh, by ultimately selling it um, and making it more widely available. So Make Mary launched two years ago um, this past June, and um, the products have been really well received, and, and we're the only um, product line in the market that des is designed for sensitive skin for women who have, uh, are undergoing radiation therapy. So is the sunburn-like reaction, is that something that's there long-term or only during treatment? So it starts usually at the third week of treatment, and it lasts for two to four weeks, depending on the length of the woman's treatment. Um, and then it just turns tan um, and then eventually fades. So the sunburn is not there forever. It's really like a period of maybe four weeks where it's really sensitive. But the thing that does happen is that many women have either fibrosis or kind of tightening of the chest wall that makes their skin and breast tissue more tender. And they'll say, I really don't like the way that underwires feel after this. And we're going to have some guests here. Yeah, I um, like that. I'm not <laughs> 
<laughs> this is my puppy Ember who's decided to sit up with me. But um, bomb. video bomb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is real life. Um, so yeah, so they they the sunburn like reaction resolves, but it's then this kind of long term um, sensitivity that women can have. So many of the women who buy our bras then will wear them um, after treatment has finished. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about kind of that emotional leap into doing something different than we are trained to do. You know, in medicine, we're like, we're, we're very focused on like what the next step is, you know, go through college, go through medical school, go through residency, you get your job, you know, you do, we're, we're pretty mm -hmm. like straight and narrow people in general. And so tell me a little bit about the emotion of jumping out and doing something new and how you overcame that. Yeah, so I would say that's actually huge, I think, for physicians who venture outside of medicine because we really are um, trained to think down this road. You, like, take this step and this step, and um, doing something like this brings a lot of unknown. And I think for me, I had a lot of fear, like, is this not a smart idea? Is this um, going to be viable. How do I even know what I'm doing? Cause I don't know anything about business. And so for me, my biggest obstacle has been fear, mm -hmm. fear of not succeeding fear that I don't know what I'm doing. Also fashion and apparel, um, can be very much an insider's business. And so yeah. that, uh, kind of fear that I had was, um, compounded by the way that people treat you in the industry. So um, for real, I, I was definitely uh, struggling with that. And I still do. I think that it's, um, you know, kind of stepping outside the bounds of what we know um, and what's comfortable. But I will say that it's also really helped me grow as a person um, and stretch myself and now I'm proud that I've tried to do something different because it wasn't like I was just looking for a business. I was really just trying to solve a problem. And so right. if I had let fear hold me back, then there are so many women who wouldn't be able to find something during treatment. So that part of it makes me proud. Okay, I did. I stepped outside of what was comfortable. And, um, you know, now these products exist for women. But yeah. I do think as... Even if you're not in medicine, stepping outside what you know can be really scary. Yep, for sure. Um, tell us about maybe um, like one or two patient stories, de-identified <laughs> a little bit for yeah. us that are really inspiring and maybe one, one of like your biggest accomplishments that you've had. Sure. Um, well, I would say my patients are amazing and I'm inspired every day. I went into oncology specifically. I entered medical school wanting to do, um, not sure which area of oncology, but I knew I wanted to take care of patients with cancer because I think they, um, have really a truly remarkable perspective on life. I think mm -hmm. when you're facing a life-threatening illness, things change and things starts to start to shift um, and people start to focus on what's really important in their life and who's really important in their life. And so I am taught daily uh, about what's important in life by my patients. And I have to say, I have a young woman who is, um, you know, I think her story and her experience and her outlook on life is inspiring me at the moment, but she's 44 and has now widely metastatic breast cancer. I've treated her twice before, um, and but now it's come back and it's incurable. And she and her husband have the most amazing perspective on life. And every time when I walk in the door, I feel like I have the heavy heart and they're the ones who are you know, doc, we're going to, you know, what do we need to do? And not in a Pollyanna way, like they don't know the prognosis or the seriousness of our disease, but it's just like whatever life throws at us, we're going to make the best of it. And we're going to celebrate today and we're going to, you know, have a smile on our face. And I just like seriously walking out of the room, I'm always like blown away at her resilience and the way they choose to respond to life. Because I think we can't control what happens to us in life, but we can absolutely choose how we respond. Um, and so I, I'd say that's one you know, patient right now who really inspires me. 
I have so many, you know, I feel like my life is full of, you know, people who inspire me all the time, just, you know, facing different um, things in life and, and how you approach it. You know, mm-hmm. I think we have so many ups and downs in life naturally that life is not always good and it's not always bad and and how you ride all of that out and how you choose to treat the people around you while you're going through life is amazing. You know, I think there's so much to learn from. Yeah, I think um, that, that choosing the way you respond is really um, a key. It's a key component to our emotional health. Um, sure. I think in every setting, and I, I talk to my clients um, about that all the time in terms of their wellness coaching is being able to figure out how to, you know, choose, you can't choose what happens to you, you can't choose the sensations that you are you are having, and your brain is interpreting all of that based on its experience, and how you wired it in the past, but you do have the opportunity to change those thoughts and re- kind of rewire your way a, a little bit. So it is nice to see people who are successful in mirroring that so that we can learn how to do that for sure. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. And so, I think it affects all aspects of your life. Yeah. So tell me, um, so t- I want to hear about fashion week, first of all, and that how amazing that was for you yeah. and for your models. Um, and then I want to hear a little bit about kind of what you're going to do now and next. Sure. So um, Make Mary has been in Fashion Week now two years in uh, February of 2006, no, 17, and then again, 2018. I was able to go this past February, and the show uh, was called The Dangerous Ones, and it was a collaboration between Anna Ono, who's uh, the licensee for my product line, and... um, the oh gosh um it'll come to me in just a moment but a uh not for profit or nonprofit that uh celebrates and really raises awareness around women who are fighting um metastatic breast cancer and so the models were 30 women all who have been affected by breast cancer some of them didn't have breast cancer themselves they had the BRCA mutation and they had mm-hmm. mastectomies um, in order to avoid the risk of breast cancer um, and then the rest of the women had breast cancer either that was under treatment or in remission and then there were quite a few women who actually were living with metastatic breast cancer and um, that show was the most inspiring thing I've been to it was amazing for me, especially here, I'm designing in a space that really seems more functional, but it was never functional for me. It was functional and it also had to be beautiful and empowering for women, but to see it on the runways at New York Fashion Week on these women who were real women who the day before walked in and, you know, were afraid and scared and had never walked a runway before. And then to watch them come out, I was just like, tears were just streaming down my face because yeah. it was... The photos were amazing. But amazing. Yeah. It really, in the energy in that room, uh, there were uh, over 500 people packed into this little um, church where the show was. And it was, the energy in there was amazing. So powerful and empowering for women and um, so much love that it was... It was really a gift. I just feel so grateful to have been able to participate. I bet just the, um, I bet just, we were talking about fear, right? And those of us who are stepping out and doing something new with business, there's a lot of fear with that. Um, I can imagine just the, the fear that people who are living with who have cancer, then to bury yourself that way, that overcoming that fear for them on that runway was probably really something to watch. Oh yeah. No. And they were terrified. Many of the women were really scared because yeah. these were real women like you and me. Yeah. And then they have, you know, scars and yeah. changes in their body that maybe they're even more sensitive than we are. And I feel uncomfortable going in a bathing suit in front of people, but to get up there and the day before when we were doing um, fittings, there was actually a there was a doctor who was in the show, and um, she's a breast cancer survivor. And she was in tears in front of the building where we were having the fitting, and just like I don't think I can do this. This is like I I was so excited about the idea, and it sounded so inspiring. But now that I'm here, I'm like, 
this, this is not me. Like I don't get out in my underwear, like in right. front of the whole world. And she was so, so scared. And like, I just remember, you know, talking to her and like, then actually we have, you know, there are all these physician groups of um, people who, you know, support one another. And there yeah. is a female physician group that are cancer survivors and all of them were like sending her good energy, praying for her. Yeah. And then she had an amazing walk and afterwards was like, I'm in next year. I'm doing this next year. I'm wearing <laughs> less clothes. And it was so <laughs> awesome because she was so proud of herself and she was yeah. literally terrified, which I would be, I would have been terrified too, but it's just like an amazing feat yeah. to get up there and really face down your fear. Yeah, absolutely. So what's your next, uh, what's your next step? So I am in a fashion accelerator right now. I'm getting ready to launch another line of lingerie outside of breast cancer. And the reason for that is what I found through Make Mary is that there are actually lots of women who have sensitivities to either fabric or underwire or seams or elastic. And that actually a lot of our customers don't have breast cancer. And so my products with Make Mary really are pretty specific and they're cut in certain ways. And then the support is quite light, which would not make mm -hmm. a great everyday bra. Um, and so I'm designing bras and now we're going to do lounge wear as well. Um, that is really designed to m help women find something that feels amazing against their skin and not constricting and also give them, gives them the support that they need go, to go out and conquer the world. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. Good. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining me on this Medical Monday. It's lovely to see you and um, love following along. I think our, you know, we have such a supportive community of us female physician entrepreneurs that are just kind of giving each other advice and support and amplifying each other a little bit. And I'm uh, happy to have done that with you here on Facebook Live, but also in person. And next time around PDX, we'll grab some more wine. That's right. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Take care. Have a great day. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.